Hello everyone and thank you very much for joining us for another story here at Annie Narrates. The title for this one goes like this. I asked my sister to be maid of honor for my wedding, but she tells me she has someone special and then she brings my fiance's ex and forces me to let her become the maid of honor or else she'll ask my parents to cancel the venue. I, 26 female, have been engaged to my fiance Noah, 26 male, for just over a year now. We have been together for the past 5 years and are scheduled to be married this coming weekend. Everything was going according to plan until my sister managed to make everything about herself. My sister Amy, 29 female, has always been my best friend. She was older than me and always seemed so mature and put together. I admired everything about her and always looked up to her. When we were kids, I always thought that she was the coolest big sister ever. She was funny, confident and smart and had a knack for socializing with people, something that I definitely lacked. She was always the person who pushed me out of my comfort zone to help me be more social. In school, she was the cool, popular girl, and I was always in her shadow. But in all honesty, I didn't mind. I was proud to be her younger sister. I could never be like her. I was shy, nerdy, and extremely introverted. Most girls like Amy would be kind of embarrassed to have me around them, but that was not Amy. She was never embarrassed of me. In fact, while most of her friends would ignore their younger siblings, Amy would take me with her wherever she went. She even introduced me to her friends, which was kind of a big deal back then. You might think that I was jealous of her, but I wasn't. She deserved all the attention she got and honestly, she was not a bad sister. She never made me feel like I was inferior. In fact, she was the person who helped me build my confidence and self-esteem to make me into the person that I am today. After Amy graduated, she decided not to go to college. Instead, she worked at a nail salon and she was super happy and content with her job. She was also a bit of a serial dater. She had a new boyfriend almost every month. It was not like she was planning on getting into a serious relationship with them. Rather, she was just in it for the fun, nothing serious. I, on the other hand, had never been in a relationship, mainly because I was too preoccupied with school. After graduating high school, I went straight to college to get a degree in marketing. I had a few flings here and there, but once I was done with college, I managed to get a great job at a marketing company where I still work. I managed to move out of home and get an apartment for myself which was closer to work. Amy was still working at the nail salon and still living with my parents. One day, while she was over at my place, she kept talking about how even though she was a grown woman, she still had to answer to our parents and that she was thinking of moving out. I immediately asked her if she would want to stay with me. It was always my dream to get an apartment with my sister. She denied it, saying that she would never be able to pay for her half of the rent because was earning a much smaller salary. But I didn't even care about it. She had done so much for me. This was the least that I could do for her. I loved having her around and living with her would be fun. She moved in a month later. Now, if you couldn't tell already, Amy and I were pretty different. She was always going to parties and even hosting parties at home. One night she told me that she was going to meet a bunch of her friends at a nightclub. I told her that I had never been clubbing before and she was so shocked to hear that, that she dragged me along with her to the club. This is where I met Noah for the first time. I was never someone who believed in love at first sight, but the minute I saw Noah, I knew that he was something special. Amy was the one who introduced him to me. Apparently, they had a few mutual friends and had known each other for a while. I was drawn to Noah almost immediately and I could tell that he was interested in me too. Even though Amy had dragged me into this club party, I found myself talking to Noah the whole time. He was handsome and charming and had the most beautiful smile. Our conversations flowed so easily and he was so fun to talk to. We drank and danced together that night and it was genuinely the most fun I had had in my life. On the way back home, Amy could tell that I had some feelings for Noah and kept teasing me about it. The next day she came into my room squealing because Noah had texted her asking for my number. I couldn't believe it. No one had ever asked for my number before, especially when Amy was around. Amy texted him my number and he asked me out on a date the same day. I was terrified. I was never great at making conversations, especially with such a cute guy but I decided to give him a shot and it was the best decision I ever made. Noah had this ability to bring out the best in me 
He made me open up. Around him, conversations were easy. He made me feel seen and heard. He never pressured me into doing anything. Was always kind, courteous, and extremely funny. We went on a couple more dates, and I realized that I was falling for him hard. Amy was fascinated when I told her that we had been on a couple of dates. She almost found it funny. She said that she couldn't believe that I was actually going out with someone like Noah because he was not my type. She told me to have fun with him because a guy like him moves fast and wouldn't stick around for long, especially with someone like me. Her words hurt a bit. I knew she didn't mean to be rude. She was just very frank, but it rubbed me the wrong way that she thought that Noah and I weren't going to last. After going out for a few months, Noah finally asked me out. This was a pretty big deal for him because he said that I was the first person that he was interested in since his last relationship. Noah had been in a long-term relationship with his high school sweetheart Jade. They had been together for four years and things were getting pretty serious. But then he found out that she was cheating on him with one of his close friends. It was a pretty bad breakup and he didn't date anyone for almost a year until he met me. I said yes. I was truly in love with him and I knew that he loved me too. We have been together ever since. Amy was more surprised than anyone when I broke the news to her. She thought that I was joking at first, but once she saw that I was telling the truth, she told me to be careful, because this was my first real relationship, and guys like Noah like to prey on naive girls like me. She said that Noah must be having some type of ulterior motive to get with a goody two shoes like me. Now this stung. I get that as a big sister, she was concerned about me, but the way she spoke about our relationship made me feel very invalidated. She made it seem as if I wasn't deserving enough for Noah. I let it slide. I was happy with Noah so far into our relationship. He treated me like a queen. He made me feel like I was the only girl in the world. I trusted him, and we loved each other, and that was the only thing that mattered. Even though Amy felt like we weren't going to last, our relationship was thriving. She was the one who couldn't find a steady partner. Over the next year, there was a constant carousel of boyfriends that Amy had, but none of them stuck. Noah and I were going strong. I could tell that Amy found us cringe because she still made it clear to me that Noah was going to leave me. But I didn't care. He spent more time in my apartment than his own. We decided that the only logical thing would be for him to move in. We were almost two years into our relationship and it seemed like the correct step to take. At first, everything seemed fine. But it started getting difficult because Amy would keep bringing random guys home. She still didn't pay rent, never bought groceries, and messed up the apartment. I could tell Noah wasn't comfortable with all this, but didn't say anything to me. Whenever she was in the room with us, he would just keep quiet or leave the room. I realized that this wasn't going to work. Amy had to move out. She didn't take the news well. She told me that I was making a huge mistake by ditching her just because of Noah and that I was going to come running back to her when he left me. I knew she felt like I was betraying her, so I didn't take it to heart. I think she understood that it was better if she moved out because the following month, she had moved back in with our parents. After this, Noah seemed way more relaxed and so was I. It finally felt like we were truly a couple. On our fourth anniversary, Noah proposed to me. It was everything I wanted. Of course, I said yes. My entire family was overjoyed. They loved Noah. He was respectful and kind, and they could clearly see that he treated me well. Even Amy seemed to be happy for me when I told her. She had tears in her eyes and couldn't stop crying. I was touched. Wedding preparations were in full swing. Both Noah and I were working our butts off trying to save money for the wedding. It was always my dream to get married at this beautiful venue. I'm not going to mention it for privacy. But it was this gorgeous estate, with a forest behind it, and it was just stunning. We could never afford it, but I just couldn't get it out of my head. One evening, I had my parents over at our place, and we were discussing the venue, when my dad saw that I had bookmarked my dream venue. When I told him that there was no way we could afford it, he told me that he would rent it out for us. I was shocked. This was my dream. My dad said that this was his wedding gift to us. It was the least that he could do. We were thrilled. We booked it. The months leading up to the wedding were hectic. I was exhausted from work, but at the same time I had to pick out the dress and the decor, the menu, the bridesmaids. It was overwhelming. I knew one thing for sure. Amy had to be my maid of honor. She was the one who introduced us to each other 
and even though she thought that we weren't going to last, she recently redeemed herself and was a massive help to me during the wedding prep. As the wedding approached, things just kept getting even more hectic. But around a month before the wedding, I noticed that Amy was behaving quite differently. Initially, she had been pretty supportive and helpful, but in the last few weeks, she was rather distant. I could tell something was bothering her, but whenever I tried to speak to her, she would just make up some excuse to leave. About two weeks before the wedding, I got a surprise visit from Amy and another girl. She told me that she wanted to introduce me to someone special, pointed at the girl, and told me that she was Jade. Yes, Noah's ex-girlfriend. I was in shock. I had no idea that Amy was hanging out with Jade. Amy told me that she and Jade had met up a couple of months ago and didn't know each other. But later, once Jade came to know that I was engaged to Noah, she told Amy the truth. Noah had been cheating on me for the first two years of our relationship. Apparently, Jade and Noah were engaged when Noah asked me out, and neither of us had any idea that the other existed. They had never broken up, and Noah had tricked both of us. He made all sorts of promises to Jade that he was going to settle down and marry her. But about two years into our relationship, he completely ghosted her and blocked her from all his socials. She had no idea where he was. She even showed me text messages between her and Noah around the same time that I was dating him. She told me that Noah was a lying scumbag and that if he cheated on her, he would cheat on me too. It was just a matter of time. I refused to believe it. Amy had a smug expression on her face. She told me that she had warned me many times to be careful of guys like Noah and now he needed a taste of his own medicine. She said that she couldn't be my maid of honor. Instead, she tried forcing me to make Jade my new maid of honor. At this point, I was confused. Why did she want me to marry Noah, even when she was the one who literally brought his ex-girlfriend to me with proof that he was disloyal? Why was she so focused on such an irrelevant thing like the maid of honor, when Jade has just turned my whole life upside down? Something wasn't adding up. I asked Amy why she was forcing me to make Jade the maid of honor, and Amy said that she wanted to surprise Noah with Jade on the wedding day so that Jade would expose him to everyone and he would have no face to show anybody anymore. He would be labeled as a cheater and Jade being there would embarrass him. Nothing was adding up. She wasn't making any sense. I told her that there was no way that I was making Jade my maid of honor. I literally didn't even know her and moreover, I trusted Noah more than anything. I was not going to base everything on what a stranger said. Amy started getting angry. She said that I had to make Jade my maid of honor. Otherwise, she would tell our parents to cancel the wedding venue. This was getting ridiculous. I had never seen Amy like this. She was being nonsensical. I began putting things together. Her weird behavior these past few weeks, randomly bringing Jade to my apartment, telling me that Noah was a cheater, threatening me to make Jade my maid of honor, otherwise she would cancel the venue. Nothing was making sense. It was as if Amy was pulling at loose ends to make me break up with Noah, but at the same time, she wanted us to get married so that she could embarrass us on the wedding day. I was so confused but my gut was telling me to trust Noah. When I told Amy that I didn't believe her story, she started crying. Just hysterically crying. Even Jay looked uncomfortable and left. I tried to calm her down but nothing I said made her stop. This lasted for about an hour. I was so busy trying to deal with her that Noah completely skipped my mind and I was surprised when I saw him come home. On seeing Noah, Amy sprang up and threw herself into his arms, sobbing into his chest and asking him to hug her. Now I know I looked confused, but I was finally putting the pieces together. How had I have been so stupid? Amy was in love with Noah. I just stood there in silence while she continued weeping. Noah pushed her aside and came towards me. Finally, after what seemed like forever, Amy looked at me and told me that she hated me. She said that she was the one who loved Noah first and that I had stolen him from her. She said that she regretted introducing him to me because if she hadn't, Noah would have been hers and she would be the happy one, not me. She never thought Noah would ever fall for a girl like me and she couldn't believe that we were actually dating. She was so sure that Noah was going to leave me and fall for her, but no matter what she did, Noah never even looked her way. She saw how well Noah treated me, with so much love, care and respect. Her resentment for me grew even more because that could easily have been her. Instead, she was stuck in an endless loop of immature men 
who were only interested in one night stands, when all she really wanted was Noah. The more she spoke, the more shocked I got. Noah looked terrified of her. He said that when he moved in initially, Amy always tried flirting with him when I wasn't around. She even tried groping him. He kept quiet because she was my sister, but he had no idea that she was obsessed with him. Now I understood why he was always so uncomfortable when she was around. I needed a minute to gather myself. I told Noah about Jade and all the accusations that they had made, but I had already figured everything out. Noah truly hadn't had any contact with Jade for the past 7 years and he had never cheated on me. Amy confessed that it killed her to see me marry the love of her life. He was everything she wanted and she would do anything to get him. Even if that meant hurting me in the process. She paid an actress to pretend to be Jade. She digitally altered all the text messages to make it look like Noah was cheating on me. She thought that I would get convinced by all this and break off the wedding. But when I refused to believe a single word, that's when she got desperate and started coming up with things on the spot, like forcing me to make Jade the maid of honor and threatening to cancel the venue. She was truly out of her senses. She crawled towards me with tears in her eyes and fell to my feet, begging me not to marry Noah and to let her have him instead. She justified this by saying that she had done everything for me my whole life and the least I could do was give her Noah. I was disgusted. Noah pulled her to her feet and told her that he never loved her and she was crazy to think that he would ever love her after everything she did. He told her that he didn't want to ever see her again and if she ever tried contacting either of us again, he would call the police and kicked her out of the apartment. It's been a week. Everybody is in shock. Noah hasn't left my side. My parents are appalled by what Amy has done and they told her to move. Last I heard she was staying with a friend. I haven't been able to process anything. The wedding plans have been halted. I think we might have to postpone it. Noah and I love each other, but Amy has just ruined my mental health. I just feel terrible every time I think about it. Should I try talking to her? Just to get everything off my chest. Hello. So yeah, a bunch of stuff has happened since I posted this. The wedding went ahead as planned. There was no point in postponing it because we had already paid for everything. We couldn't just cancel everything so close to the wedding and get a full refund. Moreover, only our immediate family knew about the whole Amy fiasco. All of our friends and extended family didn't. So postponing the wedding would have just brought up unnecessary questions that we don't really feel comfortable answering. Most importantly though, Noah and I love each other and that hasn't changed. Nothing will change it. Yes, it wasn't ideal because the week leading up to the wedding was traumatic and I wasn't in a good space mentally. But I was walking down that aisle, seeing Noah waiting for me at the other end with tears in his eyes made me realize that I wasn't wrong. Just looking into his eyes as we said our vows made me realize that everything was going to be okay as long as I had him with me. That was all that mattered. The entire ceremony was beautiful. Everything went off great. I read through most of the comments and many of you were angry at the fact that I was even considering postponing the wedding. The thing is, everything came as a huge shock to me. My own sister betrayed me. I wasn't in the right frame of mind at that time. Postponing it seemed right, but then I realized that it was stupid. So don't worry, we got married. Amy obviously wasn't at the wedding. I didn't hear from her until a week later. She called me up and even though I never wanted to speak to her again, I just had to hear her voice. She apologized to me. She apologized for everything. She said that she acted foolishly and that she was just infatuated with Noah and was going through a depressive episode because of all her failed relationships. It was a silly crush that should have been terminated at the bud, but she just let her bitterness grow until it festered and led her to act out in this way. She said she never meant to hurt me. I was her best friend. But she let her jealousy get the better of her. She also went on and on about how she would never come between Noah and me and that she would understood if I never wanted to see her again. She deserved it. I wanted to talk to her, but I just couldn't get myself to say anything. She has hurt me deeply, not to mention how terrible Noah feels. Even though he tells me that he's okay, I can tell that he is still very disturbed by Amy. Right now, Noah and I are in Hawaii for our honeymoon. We go back home this weekend and I know that we are going to have to face reality once we return. But for now, we are happy in our own little bubble, trying to forget about Amy and enjoying the beaches, food and culture. Just thought that I'd quickly come here to give you an update because this post seems to have blown up. I'll let you know what happens when we go back. 
So, it's been a month since my last post. Thank you for all the well wishes. Noah and I appreciate them very much. I did a lot of thinking and contemplation after coming back from Hawaii, and I concluded that I don't want to have too much to do with Amy anymore. This might sound harsh, but even if I did get back on talking terms with her, things would just be weird between us. None of us would forget that night and the things she said. Honestly, the way she cried and clung to Noah did not sit well with me. And the most important reason why I don't want anything to do with her is because of Noah. She violated him, and he's very nervous even at the mention of her. I never want to put Noah in a difficult situation. I know that he would be okay with me talking to her, even if he hated it, because that's just how much he loves me. But I don't want him to be uncomfortable. I don't want him to ever relive that again. I know he would do the same for me. I did speak to Amy after coming back. I told her that I didn't think I would ever be able to forgive her. The length she went to, just to ruin my relationship was not normal, and I made sure to tell her that I was deeply hurt by everything. At the end of the day, she was my sister, and somewhere deep down, I still love her. Our relationship would never be the same, and I told her that it was best if we cut contact with each other. That was three weeks ago, and I haven't heard from her since. This whole situation hurts. I miss my sister, but I can never excuse her behavior. I feel like I made the best decision for my family, and I'm going to stick with it. Noah and I are getting settled into married life. We're busy catching up with work. He is the absolute best, and being with him every day makes everything worthwhile. Good morning. It's been four months since the wedding, and things have been great. I didn't think it was possible. But Noah is an even better husband than a boyfriend. He says hi, by the way. We are in a marital bliss and just enjoying our time as newlyweds. Thank you for all your support. I haven't spoken to Amy, but my parents inform me that she has a new boyfriend and they've been dating for two months. I think that is the longest relationship that she's been in. I realized that Amy was not in love with Noah, but rather the idea of him, someone who was kind and loved her for who she was. I wish nothing for the best for her, and hopefully, this man treats her right, but I will still not be in contact with her. Anyway, I don't think there's anything left to update, so I'm signing off. And that was it for today's story, thank you very much for listening. Smash that like button for me, and subscribe for more stories. Thanks again, we'll be seeing you in the next one.